We welcome you to WOSN, a special sit-down interview with Dylan Klein. You might remember him from his Delphus Jefferson days, state champion in 2006. We're going to relive some of those moments and then see the change. You might not recognize him right now. He was a little bit bigger, a little bit shaggier back in his high school days. And then we'll see what's ahead for Dylan Klein. Some very bright things in his future. But let's first look back. We were talking before, and you said that state championship, 2006, one of the best days of your life. Do you think about it much? What do you remember? Um, I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday, obviously. It, uh, it was the biggest time in my life at that point. And uh, I remember just all the support. I mean, it was, it was constant. It was, it was overwhelming at the, that point in time. And uh, I really realized that day that, you know, I could, uh, I could potentially chase the dream. Um, uh, it's always been a dream of mine to, to play professionally. And uh, ever since that day, it's been, uh, it's been a reality now. Next year, you returned to state where you were all Ohio once again, and then mm -hmm. signed to go up to Oakland. Another special day. You were going to play Division One college golf. Mm -hmm. Culmination of a high school career for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's everybody's kid to play. It's everybody's dream to play D one. Mm -hmm. um, every high school athlete wants to play Division One athletics. Um, doesn't matter what sport you play. Doesn't matter what D one program right. you go to. Everybody wants to play D one. Um, wasn't the proper fit for me. Uh, and, and it was nothing against the coaching staff, nothing, nothing against the facilities. Uh, just was not a comfortable fit for me. And uh, at that point in time, you know, I decided to come back and play Division II college golf at Tiffin University and uh, was very successful there. The hair's gone. The, <laughs> the body weight is gone, a lot of that mass. Take us through when it all changed, when, when you <coughs> said, I got to get in better shape. I got to, you know, be more clean cut. Um, it was the summer between my junior and senior year of college. Uh, Steve Mulcahy, he I've been working with him uh, out here at Shawnee Country Club for about the last two and a half years. And uh, Steve basically looked at me and he said, you know, Dylan, to play professionally for the rest of your life, you, you need to get in shape. You need to present yourself to people in a proper manner. And he said, you don't do that right now. And uh, it was a reality check. Did you fight him right away? I uh, didn't fight him right away. No, uh, no, a little bit of an argument there, yeah, but yeah. Uh, d definitely a little bit hostile towards him at that point in time. <laughs> but uh, I realized very quickly that he was right. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of work to do, uh, not only on a personal level, but on a relationship level with everybody else. And uh, losing all the body weight and uh, being a little bit more clean cut, it, uh, it helped me breed a little bit more confidence. Um, it helped me, obviously, on the golf course. Mm -hmm. Dramatic changes on the golf course. Uh, golf swing got better. Uh, wasn't wasn't tired. Wasn't fatigued. Um, was always able to do more with the golf swing. Um, I would find points in time in high school, especially where I was a little bit winded after the 18-hole <laughs> walk, you know, and uh, I was heavy. Um, but but hearing that um, suggestion from somebody of that stature, uh, Steve's. A phenomenal swing coach. I mean, he's been rated the best in Ohio several times, um, and to to hear it from somebody of that stature, really, really rocks your world. I mean, it really makes you understand that look, he 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 has your best interest at heart. Right. A few years later, you've got that healthy lifestyle still, and as we were talking, you said, I notice when I'm when I eat one thing that's bad, just kind of promote that healthy lifestyle and how it does make you feel better all the time. I'll tell you, I I, I feel great. I mean, I, I, it's been a blessing for me because I have not been sick in the last year and a half. Wow. Um, I have not had a day where I really just, you know, needed to lay in bed because I didn't feel good. Um, eating the proper food and, and, and training not only your mind but your body to perform at the same level, it's, it's, been, it's been a phenomenal blessing. Um, it's been a big change, very dramatic. Um, it's... it's it's not a diet, I'll tell you that. It's not a diet. Um, people always get kind of hung up on the concept of the diet, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a lifestyle change. It's a commitment, and, and it, a lot of people are scared of that commitment. I, know I was scared of that sure. commitment, for sure. Um, I mean, I had my best friend, Nate Webb, uh, mm -hmm. who used to play at St. John's, basketball, baseball, football, really right. good athlete. Um, he's my best friend. Um, he, he changed me. Mm -hmm. and he basically told me, look, he said, this is what you're going to have to do. And he said, you know, being committed to this process, it'll change your life. And I didn't, once again, you know, <laughs> old Dylan, he, he, <laughs> he, he, uh, he didn't believe him. He, he, wanted, uh, he wanted to fight. He wanted to have, a, have an argument. And uh, I realize now that it was the best decision of my life. 
you talk about the old Dylan, and, and you said, I've lost so many friends from high school because of how I treated people, but that has changed dramatically the last few years, how relationships are so vital to just everyday living. Absolutely. Uh, the relationship is, is the most important thing in life. Um, you know, we had a phenomenal lunch conversation today about, you know, it's about other people. Mm -hmm. It's about living your life for others. Um, it's, it's at the end of the day, yes, it is about yourself and making yourself better, but you live through others. You have to live to influence others. You have to make other people feel important. And, and you know, being able to build a relationship, being able to focus on that process, um, gets you the results you want. I mean, it, it gets you the desired results. I mean, my results have been phenomenal, but I don't, I didn't do this by myself. I did not, I didn't create this person by myself. You know, I've had the support of numerous people, um, swing coach, sports psychologist, I mean, mom and dad, best friend, Andy Lynch. I mean, it's been, it's been, it's been a phenomenal journey just so far. And, uh, you know, I really, really understand now that life is not about who you are. It's about how you live for others. This past summer, you were kind of going through some struggles, had lost uh, a couple of people that are very important to you in mm -hmm. your life, and you were facing graduation coming up soon. You didn't know what your life would be next, and then you went to church. Kind of take us from that moment on and what happened. You know, I, I went to uh, church with Grandma in the middle of July of, of this last year. 2013 and uh, it was a rough time. I, I, I was in grad school. I was taking six classes, um, practicing, trying to play as much as I could. Um, I was frustrated with my golf game. I was frustrated with where I was headed in life and I didn't have a vision. I didn't have a dream. I had always, uh, always kind of had the inkling that I was, could be or potentially had the potential at least to play at the next level. Um, but I wasn't committed. Um, I wasn't committed to God. I wasn't committed to the process of achieving my vision, achieving my dream, um, or in a sense making my dream a reality. And uh, I had a long talk with God that afternoon in church. And uh, I felt my grandpa on my mom's side more than ever. And on the way home from church that afternoon, it, my life changed. Um, I decided that afternoon, I called Grandma back on the way home, and I said, Grandma, did you feel Grandpa today in church? And she said, yeah. I said, I know what I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, I was, I was struggling. I was, at, I was at one of the lowest lows that I've been at. And, uh, I mean, I had done all this work. I had accomplished all these changes physically. Mm -hmm. Mentally, I wasn't there. Um, I had no vision, no dream, and you know, I told myself I want to be 120% committed to playing professionally, and, and it had always been a dream that had been talked about. Um, it had always been something that mom and dad and I had discussed forever, <laughs> um, but I wasn't ready. Um, I wasn't ready spiritually, I wasn't ready mentally. Physically, I was getting there, um, but I wasn't even in as good a shape then as I am now um, because I wasn't 120% committed um, to, to the process. And that Monday morning, I called Dr. Kays, who's my sports psychologist out of the Athletic Mind Institute in Dublin, Ohio. And um, since then, my life has changed dramatically. And it's going to change even more. Your hope is to stay around this summer mm -hmm. and then go on tour, kind of take us through that. Um, my hope is right now um, that in August I'll move to Myrtle Beach. Um, I have, have some business plans in the works right now with several individuals, a couple here from Lima, and then uh, a lot of people from Tiffin, um, from the town of Tiffin. Um, plan to start playing August, August of this year, professionally. Um, I'm gonna start on the National Golf Association Tour, or the NGA Tour. Um, it's where pros like Jason Duffner, Zach Johnson, Bubba Watson, Keegan Bradley, um, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. I mean, uh, this, this, is, this is the best mini tour in the United States. 
Um, it's kind of a ladder system where obviously the PGA is the, the ultimate goal. Right. Um, the web.com is kind of just a step below that, not really even a step below because the player caliber is still the same, but uh, it's just another step in the ladder. And then the NGA tour is kind of that third rung. And um, start out on the NGA tour and I'm gonna give it a shot. Yeah. Um, I, I have a phenomenal opportunity and, and I'm very blessed to have met the people that I've met and to have developed a relationship with the people that I've met this summer, this past summer. And uh, I guess I'd, <laughs> up until July, I never really realized how these people would help me, you know, or how these people would influence my life. And uh, now I really understand that the relationship with these people is what's giving me this chance. And I think that, I think that a lot of athletes miss miss that concept. Right. Um, I think a lot of the athletes feel very entitled. And, and I'll be honest, I was one of those athletes. <laughs> I mean, I was one of those athletes. I, I, I felt very entitled to the interviews with Andy Lynch and, <laughs> and, and state championship rings and, and banners in the high school. And, and, and looking back on it all now, it's, it's been a drastic change. But uh, the middle of July in 2013, my life changed. And there's just, just no question about it. How can people follow along with your journey? I know you're on Twitter, but give us some of the other ways. Yeah. That Dylan, <laughs> fine golf is going worldwide. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my, my website will be launched April 3rd, okay. um, www.dylankleingolf.com. Uh, you can follow me right now on Twitter, at DylanKleinGolf, and then uh, actually on Instagram as well, at DylanKleinGolf. Um, I'm basically making everything that I'm doing right now media public. Um, <laughs> I like to have the interaction with everyone. I like to see and get suggestions from other people on, well, what, have you done this or have you done this? Okay. Um, just just last night, actually, I'm I'm sitting there at my computer desk finishing up a little bit of graduate school work, and uh, my buddy texts me and he goes, "Hey, are you uh, are you on LinkedIn yet?" And uh, so I'm gonna have to start a LinkedIn account too. But uh, <laughs> I just started. Yeah, 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 definitely I something. Out for a while. <laughs> definitely, definitely something that I'm gonna have to do um, this afternoon when I get home. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, follow the journey, please. I mean, I, I definitely, I love hearing the suggestions. I love the support. I mean, that, it makes me feel good. You know, it, it makes me feel good. But I also, I like to convey what I'm doing to everybody else. Sure. You know, um, the town of Delphus has given me a lot. The town of Lima has given me a lot. Um, you know, if, if this is something where I can, can put these towns on the map or maybe even help them, financially with donations or here and there, you know, for, for different businesses, different companies, that's definitely something I want to do. Um, but like I said, yeah, please follow my journey. Um, this is, it's going to be a phenomenal journey. It's going to be one heck of a ride. Um, but we're definitely looking forward to it, but also got to be a little patient here. Got to be <laughs> a little patient. That, yes, yeah. Ta do. Talked about that. <laughs> uh, so got to be a little patient with this, but, uh, April 3rd, everything will be, uh, up and running on the website. The Instagram and the Twitter accounts are going right now. Um, and I'm tweeting daily and Instagram and probably two, three times a week at least. So uh, please definitely follow. All right, Dylan Klein, we're excited to follow his journey as he goes on the pro golfing tour. Even more important, just great to see the changes in his life and how he's realizing what is most important. This has been a WSN special here on the West Ohio Sports Network.